What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. We got another one straight out of Puerto Rico. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have a RK one up control deck shipped to us. And on this one, we are installing a Pandora's box six home edition on this one. <laughs> been a while guys but yes i am doing a lot of stuff as you see my other videos again busy months ahead of us but we're still doing some arcade work but real quick i gotta take a time out okay i was gonna do this i think i got the message on friday today's monday june 3rd I got the email you guys you guys right there are amazing we hit 500 subscribers i got the email i could fit a jumbo jet that's how many subscribers we have so again um Big shout out to you guys following, subscribing, watching all the videos. I know you guys don't like selfie mode, but again, you're gonna have to deal with it a little bit. I got my hand a little bit more sturdier on this one, but again, big shout out to you guys, the fans, watching everything. I enjoy the comments, I enjoy the likes. As you can see, I always comment back, I always answer back, so big thumbs up to you guys. I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. So now real quick, I just wanna take another second because what was amazing that when I got this email was that somebody commented on a video, maybe a couple months back where I went to go look, again, I, I comment back on all your comments. You could even see it, I always comment back. So what was very unique was that uh, somebody commented on a video, I clicked on it on my phone, I clicked on it and load up the comment, but as it loads up the comment, it loads up the video. All of a sudden, this part of the video, it actually showed me talking to myself, telling myself, Vic, just keep going. You got people that are watching it. People are watching your videos. They're liking everything. So keep up the good work. And then sure enough, like the next day, I got an email. We got 500 subscribers plus. So again, big shout out to you guys. I'm planning like to do a giveaway. We'll give away a mini NES if we get a couple more subs, but I don't make any guarantees on that. But we'll do a, a definitely a giveaway in the near future. But real quick, we are back. Let's talk about this one right here going out to Puerto Rico. Uh, Kodo. Kodo, send me an email, gamecasearcades at gmail.com. Again, guys, I know you guys are looking for a website. I am in the making of it, but again, I'm very busy. Send me an email. He needs some help. He sent me his Pandora's Box 6. He sent me his control panel. We're basically going to hook it up right now for Kodo. So now again, we're going to take this video real quick. I'm going to title it RK1UP Pandora's Box 6 Conversion. We'll do the whole thing. I got this package on Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday. Um, there's a couple things I noticed off the bat. But real quick, let me put the camera down because you guys don't like selfie mode. Let's unbox what we got and let me tell you what I discovered so far as far as parts that we need for this build. All right guys, so again, I know you guys don't like selfie mode, but check it out real quick, okay? <laughs> that was just a side box. We're in the shop, of course. Kodo sent me an email. He said, hey Vic, um, I think he got it to work. Uh, I'm not too sure, honestly. Uh, he sent me the control panel. You have it right here. And I gotta say for Kodo, I mean, I'm amazed. He watches the videos, I appreciate you watching it. But I gotta give you big props, dude. I mean, you literally bubble wrap this thing. Um, I always request the actual screws. Look at this, he's got it in a Ziploc bag. So respect to you, Kodo. I like how you did it. Um, again, Kodo was emailing me and um, he basically just needed some help. Um, I don't know if he bought buttons, but he did request uh, Sanwa sticks. We went to Game Room Solutions, obviously. Ryan at Game Room Solutions. I gotta get my package. Guy always loved Game Room Solutions. So, Kodo on this one did want LED buttons. He wanted Sanwa sticks on this. And the main thing is that he did want it to work with his Pandora's Box 6. Again, um, this actually has his phone number on it. <laughs> As you can see there, we are running a Pandora's Box 6. So again, we have a Pandora's Box 6 on this. I've done it a couple of times. This one is the home edition, um, family version, I should say. It's a family version. He gave me the manual, smart man. The way it looks though, I don't think he actually tried or attempted to try like a button, kind of. I don't think he tried to set it up. Cody, you let me know if you ever tried it, but he left like the rubber band still on everything. So I'm guessing maybe the wiring kind of spooked him a little bit. Again, guys, wiring could be tough. It could spook you a little bit but it's always good to give it a try. You really can't mess anything up. Um, I do have to give big kudos though. Uh, I received the package on Thursday and I tested it out. I couldn't get the Pandora's box to boot. 
Um, so surprisingly, I messaged Kodo and I'm like, listen, I think there's something wrong with this. Um, and he actually taught me, see, I don't know everything. He actually taught me that this actually has a switch on it. These yellow wires right here are an actual switch. And basically, I mean, I was giving this power, like I had power going to it. I connected an arcade power supply, a regular 12 volt power supply, and I couldn't get it to turn on. And then he actually told me, you do need these two yellow wires connected as they do work as a switch. I never seen that. Um, very interesting. And not to mention though, the, the manual on this, the actual pinout is incorrect as far as like what this manual shows. Uh, it's very odd. I never seen that. Um, so I thought it was a, I thought it was dead, which is why I thought he sent it to me, but it's fine. We bought it back and we're going to basically hook this one up. So real quick, let's go through a parts list real quick, just to tell you what's going on and, and what I discovered was the first thing, uh, was at least an issue that I discovered on this. So again, at my shop, Game Room Solutions, Ryan always hooked you up. He, he sometimes hooks you up with some extra like, you know, buttons and the micro switches and all that. So the first thing I did, this does have a very unique JAMA. Uh, it's like a, a newer version. Basically like, you know, this is your JAMA board, your JAMA pinout, your JAMA input, whatever you want to call it. Um, usually I'm very used to the big ones, the original arcade PCB ones. Um, so this one does have it. The only one thing I did notice, and I'm going to bring you in close, check this out. Again, this came with his um, with his pack, and the first thing I noticed off the bat is all these connections here. I hope it focuses. Let me see. Yeah, first thing I noticed here is the size of these connections. So, right here off the bat, I mean, again, I'm not, I can't really see it. Maybe you guys can see it. Let me see. Basically the connection here is too small for an actual arcade micro switch. If I bring it in, I mean, again, I'm trying to do this in front of the camera. We got our micro switch here. Damn. Okay, so I had to flip this over guys. So real quick, we have a micro switch here, which is really like a 0.25 from my research. A regular standard micro switch is a 0.25, but check this out. Again, the connector on this is very skinny, almost as if it's like for that cheap Amazon button kind of setup. So if I basically tried to put the clip into this, it is basically too small. Check that out. It's too small. So that was like the first thing. Once um, once I got that in the mail and I got his his Pandora's box in the mail, I noticed that there was something off about it. So. First thing that we had to do, at least for this order here, my let go is going off. Somebody's just looking for an arcade, I guess. First thing I noticed off the bat was that. So we had to hit up Amazon. I'll include the links. Basically, we went on Amazon and we bought new heads. Basically, um, these are female heads. We had to buy new female heads. And basically, the biggest challenge for this one specifically is that we are going to have to change about like 95% of these heads. The negatives, the grounds on these are too small to fit ryan game room solutions button micro switches so that's like the first thing i noticed um second thing i noticed um kodo did not send me his power supply so i basically have a bunch of 12 volts from security cameras uh i basically took a 12 volt added a pigtail to it and then we actually have it connected directly to the side of the 12 volts before we start anything with wiring though um so for kodo again big shout out he did bubble wrap this it's really good um he does not want um to do the extra like seven three uh the z313 logitech mod so basically what i'm going to do for him is that i'm going to drill out the speaker holes and i do have an extra you know speaker from the rk one up so basically we're going to put two speakers on this at least if he does decide later on to upgrade it it's an easy unscrew and, and re-screw with new uh, speakers and all that. So first thing we're doing on this is that we're gonna grab our drill and we're going to do the speaker mod as far as drilling it. And we're gonna do uh, an RK one up extra speaker on it. So at least we get that first done. So first thing is the speaker and then we do have our buttons in and we're gonna do wiring and all that. Okay, so we got Kodo's uh, control deck unwrapped from the bubble wrap. Again, he did start it it looks like he was trying to do the 3M tape mod on this. Pretty nice. Um, I like it, I dig it. 
it's pretty cool so it looks like i guess his cabinet is red t molding to it pretty cool stuff basically on this one again the pandora's box is really an arcade pcb so you could actually set it to do coins um so i messaged Kodo and i said hey um do you want to put a coin button in and he gave us the a-ok -okay to put a coin button in um so we're gonna actually drill two holes here so that we do get the coins and we're also going to do the speaker um, grill on this so unfortunately again the wording on the little deck here is going to go bye bye but nothing too crazy again you guys see my past videos as far as how we do um, the speaker grill pretty easy stuff you get a punch down and a drill so let me do that thing first again we're going to be putting basically again see so check it out i have like my whole arcade one up like side stuff so i always do have extra speakers lying around so we will basically just be slapping this into there just like that so i'm not going to bore you guys i'm going to cut this real quick and we'll be right back so just real quick guys i do have a control panel overlay from an old build basically we tape it down and we take a punch down and basically with our punch down tool as you can see i made all the markings and now we take our bit and we will drill through and obviously we do have We do have this right now with the painter's tape so we don't scuff up the actual control panel itself. Remember, you always drill downwards on the face of it because in reality, it's gonna destroy the back of it. So now with tape off, as you can see, pretty clean stuff. And again, that is painter's tape. As you can see, overhead, not too bad. The back of it always, always looks like a mess. That is why you drill from the top down. We have clear passageways for the speaker. And basically now we take our speaker and it will wind up being right in the sweet spot, right there, boom. Quick update, just took painter's tape off. Check it out. We got our coin buttons. Pretty lined up using our T. Um, I usually use my drill press. Did not do it on this one. I basically put the bit on a drill only because I did not want to touch this. So as you can see real quick, this is why we go downwards. As you can see, sometimes it comes out, but it's okay because nobody looks at the bottom. We always look at the top. And what's so beautiful about this and the way we have it set up is that a game room solutions button goes right in there with ease. Just running a quick test fit. We got our game room solutions going on. We always keep the padding close by. Thank you, Kodo, for that. But check it out, Kodo. We do have the starts and our coins, look at that. Pretty nice, pretty straight. Check out the back. We just put in the second speaker. Luckily in my RK one up um, treasure chest, we always try to keep the same screws. So I did use the same exact screws that I removed from other ones. I always suggest and recommend that you do give me the screws all the time. When we get to the joystick, these screws don't really care too much because we have to center out our controls, our joysticks, I should say, and not the RK one up joystick. So real quick, I'm just going to put the buttons on and let's get this ready to go. All right, guys. So real quick, again, I'm not going to bore you with putting the buttons in. I just want to make a couple of quick statements real quick. Again, always I do get my buttons from Game Room Solutions, Ryan at Game Room Solutions. And I just want to make it very, very, very clear. Uh, I don't work for Game Room Solutions. I'm not sponsored by them. Uh, I just always use them because number one, customer service is always good and I love their buttons. They don't feel cheap to me. They are real arcade buttons. You, they do have a lot. I mean, Ryan, I always mention Ryan because he's the owner of it, I believe. And honestly, every time I shoot him an email, he's the one that answers. So again, I don't want you guys thinking that I'm making money off of Ryan or all that. Um, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because I'm gonna make a video very soon discussing how much does it really cost to build an arcade because as you know in this day of age everybody tries to haggle everybody tries to complain about the pricing uh the biggest thing though that i have is that you know you have to at least cover the hardware um so a lot of the people that you know they see my bar tops on let go and they keep offering me they offer me like 300 bucks for a, a bar top i mean in all honesty guys i can't do that because the cost of the hardware, <laughs> it doesn't even cover that. So again, the only real reason I'm saying this is because um, I don't, I'm not sponsored. I don't have any hookups. 
I don't have any discounts. So every time I do state yes, Game Room Solutions, I don't get a percentage. I don't get any discounts. I don't get a reseller kind of rate. And I've never asked that. I have never asked Ryan, hey man, I keep using your buttons and I keep mentioning you in my videos. I don't work that way. That's not how real business works. I don't do that. So I just wanna make sure everybody's clear that yes, I do get my buttons from Game Room Solutions. However, I'm not getting no discounted rate for this customer, uh, for Kodo, he wanted the Sanwa Sticks LED. That car, that alone, if you go to Game Room Solutions right now, that's gonna cost you 99 bucks because of the Sanwa Sticks. I don't get, I don't pay 69 for it, no. 69 are the zippy ones. I pay retail just like what you would pay. So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, a lot of people think that I'm getting discounts and all that. I get no discounts, guys. I always try to post in the links Amazon is where I get like the LCD converter. I'm paying the same as you guys, 35 to 40 bucks. Um, again, buttons, button bundles, you're gonna get at least from 70 bucks to 90 bucks. Again, this one is running a Sanwa. Just real quick statement though, I wanna make sure that Kodo knows. Um, Game Room Solutions is a 20 button kit. If you look carefully at this, we have on Kodo's specific control panel while I do the nuts, uh, the control panel alone right now, 12, 13, 14, 15, has 16 buttons. So what I now will tell Kodo is that I'm going to send you the other four buttons and I always do it the same way in case you ever wanted to upgrade to a Pi. There's always the two white, the green which is your go, and red which is usually exit emulation once you get into the Pi. Again, for this specific build, um, you know, I did get the regular joystick bundle that I always do. This bundle does come with the USB Zinmo encoder. Me, I'm not gonna keep that. I'm going to give that to Kodo. Kodo, I'm gonna send you this back. This is literally the Zinmo in here with the USB wire, cause you paid for it. I'm giving you everything. I'm not trying to take it. I don't want it. I don't need it. So essentially, basically, Kodo's control panel, basically in all honesty, Kodo's control panel that we're making right now for this is upgradable and it's a very simple upgrade again in all honesty right now we are going to be using the jamma board based harness so he will have to remove really the inputs like not the grounds but the inputs on the actual micro switch and then put in the zin mo connection so again kodo i'm sending you this back in this box this is the usb encoder if you ever wanted to upgrade this to a hyperspin build like a pc or a pi you got it, buddy. You already paid for it. That's yours. That's it. Again, I'm just making that little statement because people assume that, you know, I'm getting discounts and I'm upselling. I don't. I literally paid 99 bucks. I could show you my emails if you want. Um, so just keep that in mind. Here we go. All set, nutted, and in. Regular Street Fighter style. Red, white, and blue buttons. We got it. We got to add the micro switches. We got our coins up top. Again, we don't have the micro switches in it. We got our speakers. Now, real quick, we can tackle the wiring. All right, guys, so actually, before we do wiring, we gotta do the joystick. So again, check it out. We do have Sanwa joysticks, ball tops on this. Look at this, we're gonna turn this over. And again, very important, you know, sometimes it's trial and error to some people, but basically, with this mod that we just did, well, not even with the mod, with new joysticks, check this out. Player one, right? Look at how the Sanwa has. Sanwa has this connection here. If I were to flip this connection, which is what I first did, I had this the other way. This white connector was this way right here. Would have been a disaster because the panel sits right here. So imagine a white connector was here. It would have been a disaster. So this fits perfectly right in between the two buttons. Again, this is what communicates to Pandora's box, basically telling what direction goes to what. Perfect, again, Sanwa joysticks on this. We got our speakers, check it out. Our joystick plate is underneath the speaker, just part of mods that you have to worry about. So we did have to lift up the speaker a little bit, slide in that, and now we are perfectly set. That is a beautiful control panel. Had a quick five minutes left to spare. We got our LEDs plugged in. Just another step closer, of course, for Kodo, I will be putting some custom inserts on this. Basically, we're gonna be putting the player one, player two, and the coins on this, so he will get a very nice control deck. 
check it out, LED'd out. This is where like the wiring starts to become a nightmare, but not too bad. All right guys, so next video, I'm gonna do it for the next one. We're gonna be working on the Pandora's box. Basically right now, I'm gonna head home, bring the control panel with me home. We're going to make our micro switches. We're gonna put the micro switches in, get ready for that. But on the next video, we're gonna be looking at specifically the Pandora's box and mostly, I mean, again, the biggest headache out of this is to recrimp all of these wires. Cause again, this connection does not fit to our micro switch. Again, wait for part two. It should be coming in about two days. Again, Vic VP. It means the world to me guys. So I really I appreciate, build it. I'll see you I really on the appreciate next video. you guys subbing.